OK. So we're close, V close now. I can feel it. So slick. So now what I want to do is I want to use this, right? When I change one of these, I would like to both change this goober over here. I'd like to change this path. And I'd like to change my stoner's path to each one of these. OK. We can do that with a parameter execute. And let's see what kind of mischief we can get into. I want to look at the operator that is above me. I want to look at the parameter called channel. I'm going to look for value change. And let's open that up. OK, what do I want to do here during value change? Let's first just print our par.eval, E-V-A-L. Because, you know, it'd be first handy to know what do we actually get out of this when something changes? Aha, so our menu name, our label is what shows up in this dropdown. Our menu name is what shows up here when we evaluate the parameter. So what we get back is actually our path to this object in question. So let's go ahead and first just take a look at how we can make sure. So let's say, let's go here, our stoner is equal to our op stoner our uh, stoner select is the operator that's a select and I think we called it for UI great select for UI select for UI okay great we've got those we're gonna focus on the stoner first so what do we want to do we want the stoner its parameter that's called, what's it called? Let's check. Let's scoot this down here. Let's clear this out. I want this par.project to be equal to my par.eval. OK, let's see if that does the trick. So keeping an eye over here, we should be able to see that we change it to 1. Oh, let's see. make this a little bit bigger. There, it changed to 1. 2, it changes to 2. 3, it changes to 3. Oh my goodness. 4, it changes to 4. I love it. But now I want this thing to update. OK. So we can see here that this in part, right, this null chan 001, that's really the stuff that I got to change. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this base part of our path. Calibration. Calibration base. So our base path is this goodness. We're going to format it with a little extra goody. Good, goody, good, good. OK. We're going to say our uh, calibration base path is going to be our calibration, or let's call it our calibration path. Uh, let's give it a different name. Our select. UI top, haha, -ha. ooh, so fancy, is our calibration base. And I'm going to format that. And what I want to dump in there is this null. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and just grab all of this goodness because we can derive the rest of this in a tricksy way. Okay. So we're going to format this. Let's actually write one other bit in here. Our um, texture digits is going to be equal to our um, TDU digits and our par.eval. So we'll pass in this string, right? Take a look over here. We're going to pass in this whole big long string, and we should just get our digits out of it, hopefully. Let's, fingers crossed, that should do the trick for us. All right, so we're going to format this. And what are we going to format it with? We're going to format that with another one of these goobers, right? You know this, 0 colon 0, 3d dot format texture digits. OK. Whew. So our select UI top. So now our 
stoner select the parameter called top should be our select UI top Oof, let's see I don't know we might need to check that one more again all right one that one worked no errors yet two <gasps> look at that three oh my god it's just like magic there we are okay now the last little thing that I will leave you to your own devices to understand or play with is in order for this to really work, we need to be able to see this remap texture. Now I've done all sorts of little tricks before where I've blocked it here into the UI in some place. I've added it some other place in my UI. There are lots of ways that you can go about kind of uh, getting away with something tricksy here in this, right? So certainly you can kind of see uh, what's going in and out to this UI, how that part works. I'll leave you to figure out where you want to stick it. For now, as long as we can see it in our network, we'll actually be able to see some mischief at play. So I'm going to go ahead and move this other stubborn little bit over here. So channel one, if we get a little closer to our UI, we should see that when we make an alteration here, that updates what happens down over here, channel two. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and move that one around just a little bit. Oh my goodness, this is the best calibration I've ever done in my entire life. It's stunning. It's riveting. I know. You know what? This one's got this weird little grid warp situation. It's got a little warble here at the bottom, a little curve spot we got to account for. Oh, that's, that's great. And channel four back to our keystone and this one just got a, a simple keystone block right there okay and we're off to the races now you'll remember we can turn off uh, the UI bits for those things now our stoner costs us no cycles at all so slick we can see here that because we're not actually running video through this the calibration portion of this all of this displacement doesn't count cost us anything only costs us something if it's video that's actually processing this so if you're working with still images or a gallery show right where you don't have moving video this can be especially performant uh, in a lot of ways the last thing that we can do here is let's bump up here let's save our project we can see it hang here just for one good old second and now let's just go ahead and save this talks and I'm going to create a new folder, calibration data. And I'm going to dump this right in here. And now, hopefully, what we should see is that if we save this one more again, chung. oh, you know what? I missed one thing. We've got to go to the common page. We've got to point at this here, external talks. We need to make sure that it's set to reload on start but that it is not saved as a backup let's save it one more time excellent and let's make sure we save this component talks uh, and we're saving this again because we've changed some of these parameters on it okay great everything should be persistent now and now if we take a look here now our tow files back down to five uh, kilobytes and all of the calibration information is stuck here inside of this talks Okay, so now we have a way to extract that wobbly calibration information, get it out of our actual project, make it easier to move that around in a meaningful way, and uh, bonus points, right? We've also managed to figure out what on earth this here project business is all about for the stoner and how we can build a more efficient approach for using stoner inside of our projects. All right, happy programming, everybody. I know that's kind of a weird, uh, weird one to dig into, but it points out some of the really handy features that exist inside of one of these existing uh, palette objects, and it gives you some opportunity to really start playing and dig in. All right, happy programming, and I'll see you all at the Touch Designer Summit.